So continuation of solving um, here, we're going to go through the five steps again, right? Step zero is that it must equal zero. So when we look here, does this equal zero? No. And again, you should be following along, writing your notes down, uh, paying attention, asking questions. Okay, no. we're finishing our notes from yesterday. So these are the notes that you're taking on paper. The note, the paper you got today is for part three and four with the word problem, okay? But yesterday we were writing them on our paper and we were doing our 3.2E on our paper. Writing yeah, we were writing in our notebook yesterday, okay? So I need to make this equal to zero. What would I need to do to make this equal to zero? I, in order to move it, I have to subtract 30. I can't just move it. It has to be subtracted. Since it's positive, the only way to make this side equal to zero is to subtract 30. So now we're working with x squared minus x minus 30 equals zero. Right. So is the zero rule satisfied? Yes. Okay. Step one is to factor. So when I'm factoring, I'm asking myself what multiplies to give me negative 30, but adds to give me negative 1. So what multiplies to give me negative 30, but adds to give me 1? Okay, a negative 6 and a 5, right? You can... Step 1 is factor, right? Step, yes, we're factoring. Okay, so we have x minus 6 and x plus 5 equals 0. Okay, so zero step checked. One is factoring. Step two is to. If, it if it's not a zero, we move it over to. You have to make it equal to zero. Yes. Separate. So we separate and set equal to zero. So we separate each factor and set it equal to zero. Okay, third and final step is to. Solve for x. So what do I need to do here to solve for x? <clears throat> Add 6. So we get x equals 6. Wait. We separate because oh. no, you're, you're separating because once the zero property states that I can, take e I can set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x individually. So then we get x equals negative 5. Okay. So exactly what we did yesterday, right? And then step four is if you're not sure what you did, what should you do? Check yourself. Check yourself. I can take these and plug them back in. So if I plug in 6 squared, what does that give me? 36 minus 6 is 30. So guess what? You're genius. Wait, what? Six squared minus six. Five squared minus five. Minus five. That equals 20. A negative times a negative. Minus negative five makes this a plus a five, which makes it 30. Okay. When you're checking in, when you're plugging in, guys, you're plugging in that number for every X the first time. So I'm not plugging in six here and five there. I'm plugging in six and six, five and five. Okay. And if it doesn't come out to be what it, the original was, what does that tell me? It was wrong. Okay. All right. So that's the end of part one was that. Questions about part one. Okay, part one, we were working with quadratics. Part two, which you're still writing on your own, we're going to be solving greater than two. So we're going to be working with all polynomials greater than two. Actually, we're just working with cubics. Okay, what's the difference now is that when you have a degree greater than two, that means you can have more than two solutions. Does that make sense? Okay, the bigger the degree, the more possible solutions. All right, so I'm going to give you a moment to write down example five in your notes. Does it equal zero? Yes. Okay. Step one is it has to be fully factored. This is clearly not fully factored, is it? 
No. Okay. We're going to start our GCF. Is there a GCF? Yeah. Yes. What is it? Y. So I'm going to divide out Y. So I divide out Y. And I'm left with Y squared plus 14Y plus 49 equals zero. Wait, okay. I can't understand this is done. Good. Yes. Why is it the y, like, mean? Because I just put the 49 down here. Because we divide. Y divided by y is? Oh, it cancels each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. What's that? Uh, what's step one problem? Step one factor. Fully factor. All right. Is this fully factored? Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's not. Gotta get the trinomial. Trinomial. What multiplies to give me 49, but adds to give me 14. Seven, seven. seven, seven. You can do your long way all day long. I told you that yesterday. I will not stop you, Z. Wait, so is this still on the step one? This is still step one. Step one doesn't end until you are fully factored. Oh, fudge. Fudge. Don't get missed from Amy writing. I don't know what she did to you then. Well, well, hopefully this makes sense. What are you confused about? It's just the y. What are you? No, you. It was x. Because I'm. I accidentally wrote an x, and I just made it into a y. Oh wait, it is supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, almost like you're like canceling it out for some reason. Uh -uh. I said sorry, guys. I accidentally put x. All right, so, um, this right here can can condense, and so I have y plus seven times y plus seven. It can be condensed to y plus seven squared. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So every time we have like something of the same, we can just put you condense it. Mm -hmm. And that's the answer? It's said to solve for the variable. Have we solved for y? And zero. Well, here, guys. <laughs> Your teacher makes notes late at night and things happen. All right. So step two, separate the factors and set them equal to zero. Y equals zero. And we have y plus seven squared equals zero. So we separate and set equal to zero. Step three is to solve for the Y. Well, this Y is solved for, right? There's really nothing left to do but box it. Woohoo, we're done. Okay, here you gotta get Y, um, y plus seven by itself. Well, when I take the square root of zero, what does that equal? Zero. zero. So Y plus seven equals zero. So therefore, y equals what? Negative seven. Wait, how do you? Right here, we took the square root, and we were just left with y plus seven equals zero. And so, in order to get y by itself, you would subtract seven. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. What are your questions, comments, concerns? Okay, you're going to do this one. But your hint, to fully factor, you will have to practice Xbox or grouping. Okay? So this is yours, but you have to, in order, when you get to step one, we start with our GCF, and then you're going to have to either do Xbox or grouping. Okay, I'm going to give you about three minutes. All right, guys, so the difference here is that this is a cubic function. Why? Because our highest degree is three, three right? Because our highest degree is three, your degree dictates the maximum number of X's solutions you can have, okay? So because our degree is three, that means I can have up to three solutions. Does that make sense? All right, so step one, miss step zero, we are equal to zero. Step one is to factor. Anytime we factor, we want to start with the GCF, the greatest common factor. Agreed? So here, our GCF is 
4x. So we divide everything by 4x. And we're left with 6x squared minus x minus 5 equals 0. Oh, I can just put x. I'll put like 1. You can put minus 1x. Okay. Here Now at this point, since our a term isn't equal to 1, uh, we have to either group or xbox, right? So whichever one your heart tells you, I will do xbox because the majority of my students do it. So a times c is negative 30x squared. What is my b? Negative 1x. So what multiplies to give me negative 30x, but adds to give me negative 1? Negative 6x and positive 5x. Okay, wait. So we have 6x squared. I'm listening. I don't know what. You, you guys keep starting sentences, but not finishing them. So I'm not a process. All right, when you're in the box, is greatest common factor. Or if you set it up in terms of grouping, you would have had 6x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 5. Does it matter which one you did? No, because they result in the same darn thing, right? So we have x, we have negative 1, we have 6x, and we have 5. So our factors are 4x times x minus 1 times 6x plus five equals zero. Okay. Now am I fully factored? Let me write this down at first. Can I show you, or can I say I, I, do. I don't know how I did it? Can, can we, hold on. Okay, step two is to do what? What, I don't know why. Uh, All Oh, First. I did B and C, not A. Ah, okay. I was like, so we have 4X equals 0. X minus 1 equals 0. 6X plus 5 equals 0. Every factor that has an X will be set equal to 0. Every factor that has an X we set equal to 0. Oh, under the window. So we have 4X equals 0. What happens here? We divide, right? And x equals zero. What do I do here? One. Add the one. So therefore, x equals. What do I need to do here? I'm subtracting the five, and we get six x equals negative five. Then I divide the six. So therefore, x equals negative 5, 6. Okay? So again, all of these skills are coming together. This is where we were supposed to start, by the way. But because of our algebra questionable skills, Wait. we had to do the algebra one first which is the factoring. So all those factoring skills that we've been working on for the past eight, nine days, you were supposed to have came with those. That's not our fault. Okay, yes. Well. And so um, if it felt like it was a lot at once, it's because that is normally a unit in algebra one that you would spend three to four weeks on. Good job, y'all. Okay. It's just that it's so like, if this, but imagine if we had started here without doing those eight to nine days of factoring. I would not. <laughs> and so this is the goal of algebra two <laughs> yes all right here we go don't feel that way here we go. We have x minus 4, parentheses, x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Okay. Uh, is our zero step satisfied? Yes. Uh, yes, zero step is satisfied. Is this fully factored? No. No, it is not fully factored. How do I know it's not? Because all the it, doesn't it doesn't look like it. And I know, is there something that multiplies to give me 2, but adds to give me negative 3? 2 and 1. What kind of 2 and 1? Negative two and a negative one. Wait, what? 
Aren't we going to like multiply the O? Oh. We don't multiply. Since this is like putting all this stuff for like low key scary. Well, I don't know where you've been for a week and a half. Uh, yes. Big log. Mentally out of there. Okay. All right. Now am I fully factored? Yes. After we're fully factored, what do we do to each factor? Make it, Make it equal to zero. So every factor with a variable, we set equal to zero. You have a variable, so x minus four equals zero. You have a variable, x minus four, e x minus one equals zero, and you have a variable, x minus two equals zero. All right, these are middle school, sixth grade one steppers. What? One steppers. One Just look at it. At this point, what is x? Four, one, one two. two, and we are done. That was like some hard mess. It was so horrible, I know. Oh no, the horror of it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so five steps. Let's, see, let's repeat the five steps. Zero is to what? It has to equal zero, right? Step one, factor, we have to be fully factored. So this was partially factored, right? But we have to be fully factored. Step two, separate and equal zero. Step three, solve for X. And step five, if I don't, four, if I don't feel confident, check. Plug it back into the original and check yourself, okay? All right, those are the steps to solving the equation. How do we feel? Yeah. Overall. Okay.